All right, our next scenario is going to be manufacturing to order. When a customer manufactures to order, we're thinking more along the lines that they are building something custom. An example is a long client, time client of ours that manufactures trailers, so they make custom trailers for people. There's a base component to each trailer with the wheels, the axles, the trailer bed, and a lot more things than that, but of course that's just going to be our example. <laughs> but beyond that, every customer generally picks and modifies their trailer based on some option packages. Another example would be a customer that does embroidery. They get the t-shirts manufactured and then each individual order is custom with a different spec for the design that's going to go on the t-shirts. So what we want to figure out is which items we assemble in stock ahead of a custom order. Those will be our assembly items. Then create our optional packages as group items for use on the sales order. Or of course, if you do quoting you know, on the estimate, um, but we're gonna start with the sales order. The reasons we do the custom pieces on the sales order are, first of all, QuickBooks does average costing or FIFO. If someone buys a trailer with no customization, it could cost $1,000, let's say. But the tricked out trailer with customization costs $2,000. Average cost for both trailers is $1,500. This will be an issue when selling them, of course, because we want the cost to be more accurate. Or if the timing is off from the build to when the sale, and we're using the FIFO method, the FIFO method may switch the cost. Right? And we might sell the tricked out trailer first and it costs it at $1,000. So to get the costing to be accurate using only build assemblies, we would have to create a separate SKU for each build we created, meaning an individual trailer would have a separate inventory part for every single trailer we built. That's just too many. Instead of doing this, we cost the custom piece at the customer level on the sales order ticket. Okay. The second reason that we do custom pieces on a sales order are an inventory assembly is not tied to a customer. So when you go in and create an inventory assembly, there's nowhere on there to tie it back to the customer or to the job. You can add a custom field and put the customer name on it, but they're not linked on the costing nor on the sales side. Keeping the customization on the sales order, or a summary name at the work order, makes the cost linked to the customer or job. So those additional costs that we're going to, or those additional options that we're going to look at. And finally, what really is a sales order? It's a ticket saying we need to pull these items for this job. It is doing the same function as an assembly item, except that it doesn't force you to make two different transactions. Okay, so just to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and make our base trailer. So we're going to go to our items list and create a new item and choose an inventory assembly and call it base trailer. I'll put that in the description as well and choose an income account for revenue and then come down here to our bill of materials. So I'm going to add wheels, a quantity of six, I'm going to add an axle, quantity three, and a trailer bed, quantity one. And okay. And okay. Uh, no, I don't want to update the sales. Now I'm going to go in and build my five base trailers. So the thought process here again is that I'm going to build these trailers ahead of time, right? So we're running low on trailers. I'm going to go build these base trailers, have them sitting out there waiting for the custom order to come in. Okay. So I have this base piece or base component that I can build ahead of time, prepped and ready that are consistent. Every time we build a base trailer, it's the same. Okay. So I'm going to say build and close. Then I'm going to go add the uh, base trailer to a sales order. So on the sales order here, I'm going to choose four lane hauling. Now, if this is a customer that you do multiple jobs for, you probably would want to set up a job. So I'm going to set up a job called truck 3434 and do quick add and add the base trailer down here. Now I need to create the custom package. Okay, so we're going to set that up as a group. So back in our items list, I'm going to create a new item and it's going to be a group item and I'm going to call it the silver package. And put in the description a silver package. 
Now I am going to choose to print the items in this group because I do like to show my customers what's going into the silver package so they see everything that's included. As well, that's important because when you print it out, so if you print out a work order as an example for your internal team to go and make the custom ticket or make the custom trailer, you want them to see all the things that go into the customization. So in the silver package, I'm going to add chrome painting or chrome paint, two gallons. I'm going to add painting, right, the labor for painting, a uh, quantity of two for two hours. And then I'm going to add two additional wheels and one additional axle. The wheel, the axle, and the paint will cost at the time of sale because they are set up as inventory parts. However, to associate the cost of the labor, right, the painting labor, you would need to be sure that your team puts in a time card to the item paint and tied to the job that they're working on. And of course, you'd have to process payroll through QuickBooks. Or if we sub it out, then we can enter it on a bill or a credit card charge or something. And we want to make sure that the cost is allocated to the job. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in a credit card charge. So save that group. I'm going to go ahead and enter in a credit card charge uh, to Joe's painting shop, Joe's paint shop. And Joe did paint, right? And two, quantity two paint, and it's tied to truck 3434. Now back on the sales order, I'm going to go ahead and add that customization. So we're going to add the silver package. Let me go ahead and expand this real quick. So see here, I have the silver package, which includes the chrome paint, uh, the actual painting, wheels, axle, and I can modify things in here as needed as well. Okay, and it's going to, any modification, so let's say they wanted six wheels additional and three additional ax axles or whatever it is, all of that would cost to this job and on this work order ticket. Okay, now before I hit save, I think it's important as well to take note that when I look at, let's say, how many wheels I have on hand, so I have 60 quantity on hand right now. As soon as I hit save on this sales order, what it does is it holds those wheels. So when I go back in and look at my quantity on hand, it holds them aside and says I only have 58 available for sale or usage now because two are on the sales order already. So it does hold out that inventory and says this inventory is not available for sale. Now another thing that we can do uh, is that because we, you know, a lot of times our customers, they don't have the people who are actually building this custom trailer, as an example, have access to QuickBooks, but we do print out the work order for them. Okay, so when I give it to the customer, it says sales order. However, when I print it out, I want it to say work order or build order or whatever it is that communicates to my team what they're supposed to be doing. So I can go into my templates list and I'm going to go down to the packing slip, okay, and edit it and do additional customization. Instead of calling it a packing slip, I'm gonna call it a work order. And I, you know, say, well, the ship date I'll leave on there. I don't need the ship via, you know, I will take away things that are unimportant for us. And then on the columns here, as an example, I don't want any amounts being shown, okay? Because they don't care about the amounts, the sales price or anything like that. They just care about the quantity that needs to be used. And I'm gonna say, okay, there. And then, of course, I want to make sure in my preferences that when I go to my sales and customers and my company preferences that the packing slip that I just edited or that you create is the packing slip that's chosen here. Because then what I can do is on this sales order, right, I haven't shipped it out, I haven't built it yet, but I can come in here and print the packing slip. And it says work order up top for me, right? And then it tells my team what they need to go build. So it's very similar to what you would use if you printed out a build assembly, okay? Then of course, when I'm ready to ship it, I'm gonna create an invoice and everything is going to go onto the invoice. At this stage is where everything is costed to this job. So I'm gonna say save and close. Now when I go in and do a profit and loss by a job, Right, so I have my truck 3434. I have revenue of 1158 for that truck. I have cost of goods sold of 443. I have direct labor costs at $24 for outsourcing the paint of 20, 
uh, is right there, that $24. And so I made $691 on this custom job. So this is a good example of how to handle manufacturing to order inside of QuickBooks.